And so uh, this seems like incremental progress. What do we know? Yeah, it's progress for the bondholders to at least get to the table, of course, at least take the first step towards the first table. You know, that 30-day uh, grace period uh, that led went right down to the wire, of course, when Evergrande finally paid uh, that $83.5 million coupon last week, uh, kind of left bondholders, dollar bondholders, in the dark with hardly even a peep out of Evergrande. So, yes, they do want to uh, have those talks about the situation at Evergrande, the situation with asset sales, uh, the situation on various projects which uh, have to get back up and running and generating cash, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And according to these advisors or these sources uh, that are telling Bloomberg News that the advisors to the bondholders had been uh, approaching Evergrande since mid or early September uh, but got rebuffed on the talks. But things have changed considerably since then uh, because those asset sales from Evergrande have not materialized, in particular that big cash infusion that would have come from that 51 percent stake sale uh, in its property mm. management arm. So things are a little bit tighter. So it looks as though non-disclosure agreements have been signed between advisors for both parties, and that might be the first step towards uh, debt talks. I don't want to necessarily say negotiations, but debt talks to right. get information and at least get the discussions going. Could we see some cash inf in infusion in from the billionaire founder himself? I mean, authorities are requiring that, no? Yeah, well, we're learning much more about the financial health, if you will, of uh, Chairman Hui. Uh, he is said to have lost considerable amount of money. Uh, he and his wife own 77% of Evergrande, mostly through a BVI company, British Virgin Islands. So it's a little bit, you know, secretive exactly the state of his assets. But Bloomberg Billionaires uh, Index puts his wealth at about seven and a half billion dollars, down from 42 billion back in 2017. However, we have learned from company filing that since the company went listed in 2009, he's received more than $7 billion in dividend payments, the most among the 80 or so uh, Chinese tycoons that tracked by Bloomberg.